Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenboard, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, May 18th, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we're in an uptrend dominated by large caps, mostly large cap tech, but we had another non-large cap index poke its head above the 200-day moving average today. That's a very uh, good sign for the market. We'll break that down when we get to the tail of the tape and the charts. Still recommending avoiding uh, regional banks and commercial real estate. You can see the trend gauge over here. Two upgrades today. Leadership from neutral to bullish and short term, uh, which is the five major indexes versus our 21-day moving average from neutral to bullish, multiple closes above the 21 for all indexes except for the Dow. Uh, that's not enough to keep us off a of neutral. So uh, we certainly want to close the week strong, but um, upgrading that to neutral and on the brink of upgrading medium term from neutral to bullish, multiple uh we want to see weekly closes from a bunch of the indexes above the 50-day moving average that have poked their head above the 50-day over the last couple of days. Long term, another, uh, as I said, improvement, mid, mid caps uh, poking their head above the 200-day moving average. Uh, not quite ready for an upgrade there as small caps continue to lag. So what happened today? Pre-market futures were strong. Then we had some uh, weak financial data come out and a Fed uh governor come out and say that she thinks we need to have another interest rate hike and the market reversed opened negative uh by about a tenth of a percent on the s p still positive on the nasdaq as uh, that was strong pre-market but we put the low in within the first uh, 20 minutes and uh had a nice rally to the upside and then a late morning lunchtime early afternoon sell off all the way back to uh to flat for the s p 500 and it looked like a very much a failed rally attempt today but that 4155 level i've been talking about uh we came back near there and bounced and had an extremely strong close uh, led by Chucky, that's CKY, XLC, XLK, XLY. Those are the three big tech sectors. XLC is communication services. XLK is technology. XLY is consumer discretionary. They dominated on the day in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 extended their breakouts. That's the bottom line. And as I mentioned, improvement across uh, mid and small caps also. Here are the final numbers. RG7, this was not a strong day. Well, not an overly strong day uh, for small and mid cap growth. The RG7, this is our seven uh, growth ETF composite up 1.05% on the day. S&P uh, poked its head above 4,200, closed just shy of that, but up 0.94% on the day. NASDAQ 100 continues to be a beast up 1.9%. Dow lagged, was green or was uh, red for most of the day, but managed a, a positive finish up 0.34%. Mid caps up eight tenths of a percent. Uh, Russell 2000 small caps up six tenths of a percent. Global diversified 60 40 stock and bond, big laggard on the day. Bonds down, emerging markets down, and uh, foreign developed markets down on the day. Only for the most part, the S&P 500 or the, the American index is dominated. Uh, and as a result, global up 0.13% on the day. In-house protection, we had some great cooperation by leaders and our uh, S&P 500 uh, ETF longs. And we were up 1.26% on the day, approximately. This is for uh, uh, that's for accounts that are have been fully assimilated. Some new accounts coming in have not yet been fully assimilated, but fully assimilated accounts up 1.26% on the day. Then we'll get to the tail of the tape and charts of interest, some really strong charts to show. Let's go to the S&P 500 here, and you can see very clearly the last two strong up days. I commented yesterday about the false breakdown late in the day. Here it was. Uh, but from failed moves come fast moves in the in the other direction. Uh, this was a false breakdown below the 21 EMA. 
We tested it strong to the upside yesterday, strong to the upside with a back test. The low on the back test 4160, so didn't even touch that 4155, and then a strong close. Uh, so, you know, here's the range I've been talking about 4140 ish to 4155. Uh, that's where we pulled back and held yesterday afternoon. That's where we started the day today. We pulled back and held 4160 today. That's good stuff. Uh, and then accelerated to the upside. Now we're at 4200, which has been, if we go to the 60 minute chart, not even on the 60 minute chart, we got to go back to the daily chart so you can see back in the beginning of February when we made that 4195 high, we closed above that. So a new 2023 recovery high, new 2023 closing high, still haven't eclipsed the rally from last August where we got up to 4325, but definitely uh, when you coil, we've been talking about how, how tight the S&P was, and you got to break in one direction or another. We broke up and built on it today. That's a good sign. Wasn't overly broad uh, as far as different sectors go, but it was, in fact, uh, low volatility in defensive sectors lagged in a major way. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the tail of the tape, but this looks good for the S&P 500, even if it is tech concentric and tech led and, uh, focused on tech. NASDAQ 100 just continues to just be an absolute beast. Um, semiconductors, software, and the big fang stocks doing their job. Uh, in fact, we eclipsed October high or uh, August highs on this back uh, 331-ish was the high. 334 actually was the high. Last August, we closed at 337 today showing i mean look how this lagged uh the entire uh from november the november peak the last two months of the year people selling these big cap tech stocks uh to take uh do some tax harvesting into 2022 uh and then when it turned right at the beginning of the year this is the january effect people come back into it that sold in november december uh, and look how strong the, the relative strength has been since then. Uh, we, on a relative basis, have not exceeded the highs from uh, April, but uh, nor have we in price. But on, on a relative strength standpoint, we're right there, but not in price. That's a positive. Anytime relative strength makes a higher high before price does, that's a positive and you're seeing it and it's not at an all time high, but it's a new high relative to April of 2022. So relative strength making a new high on the weekly chart here relative to last April, although we're still, uh, this was around 370. So still uh, over 10% away from those highs. Impressive stuff by uh, the NASDAQ 100. Dow Jones Industrial Average, let's go back to the daily chart here. Uh, we had one close below the 50 on Tuesday, got back above it, still below the 21 though, on Wednesday, now on Thursday, powering above uh, the 21 day EMA, coming off of oversold on the stochastic, still relatively weak, rel very relatively weak. Look how low the relative strength line is compared to the price line. Uh, that's this is I, I don't ever really understand anybody that can invest without a relative strength line uh, on their stock. There are a lot of William O'Neill um, disciples that have said it, it, the people that have trained me that said if they can only have one other indicator on their chart besides price and volume, it would be the relative strength line. And I wholeheartedly uh, endorse that. Let's go to mid caps now. MDY apps with a close two tenths of a percent above the 200 day moving average hey it's a start right uh yesterday closed basically right on the 50 day and uh second close above the 21 second close above the 50 day first close above the 200 day not showing any relative strength against the s p 500 so mid caps continuing to lag on a relative basis small caps uh, showing a little bit of a strength on a relative basis, got back above the 21 
and the 50 for the first time yesterday, and now a second close above both of them today. Note how the, the slope of that line is very, very uh, harsh to the downside. It's going to take a while for that uh, to curl higher, but uh, you got to start somewhere, still 2% below the 200-day moving average on small caps. Let's go to the one fly in the ointment that I, we continue to see, and that's the strength in the dollar. This has uh, crushed precious metals and precious metal stocks. It's not stopping uh, tech stocks in any way, shape, or form, though. Uh, another higher high for the dollar after breaking out of its range last week. We're aware of it, but it's a secondary indicator. Secondary indicators don't stop us from uh, doing, uh, they, they, let's just say they don't override price and volume, plain and simple, they don't. So, uh, yes, we're aware of it. We talk about it. We show the uh, inner asset correlation every day on these videos, but it is a secondary indicator, as is the VIX, but it's making a lower low, confirming the strength, uh, lower low uh, relative to the last two weeks anyway, confirming the strength in the S&P 500. Uh, we showed the dollar. Let's go to the precious metals now. Uh, we'll start with SLV. Silver down 1.2% on the day. Gold. This was not a good day for uh, for these tickers. Down 1.3% and GDX uh, down 2.6%, all breaking below their 50-day moving average. Let's go to bonds. TLT. Long bond making another low. We stopped out of our TMF today. Uh, yeah, it's oversold, but it continues to go lower and our uh, pain tolerance was hit today. TLT, let's go to the broad index BND. Again, lower lows breaking the 200-day moving average. Let's go to the yields. If, the, if we're seeing lower lows on the price, we should be seeing higher highs on the yields, and we are absolutely there on the 30-year, on the 10-year uh, as well strong uh, breakout on yields. I, I frankly have no explanation for this, uh, but uh, you know, I'm not a bond guru. We uh, specialize in growth stocks. What's left? Bitcoin, B-I-T-O. Uh, Bitcoin down 2.46%, not showing any strength. This usually, or at times, this has had a nice correlation as a risk on asset along with the NASDAQ 100. That's absolutely not happening now. Let's go to the uh, equal weighted uh, indexes. The, uh, here's the RSP. This is S&P 500 coming off of oversold on the stochastic and poking above the moving averages also. That's a positive sign, although not anywhere near as strong as the index itself. And QQEW equal weighted, not breaking out, uh, but showing nice action also and uh, relative strength versus the S&P 500. Let's go now to the tail of the tape. You can pause it and read through everything. I'm going to hit the highlights, positive stochastics on all the indexes, the RG7, NASI hooked back up, dollar, certainly a concern, uh, breakout now for yields. Uh, just that one day poke below the 21 before getting back above it on the S&P. Some news uh, before the open. This was from the Philly Fed factory activity fell for the ninth straight month, although it was slightly stronger uh, than expected. And then here's the Fed. Uh, Fed head Logan said the data says we need to continue hiking. Market didn't like that. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., uh, Powell and Bernanke sit down for an interview. Uh, that has the potential to move the market, so we'll be aware of that. Day count from one up to two up, second close above the 80 EMA and the 21 EMA. Expectations continue to be positive, as long as we're above the 21 on the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Uh, let's see what else, what was strong. You know, not that not that many sectors up today, just dominated by Chucky, XLC, XLK, XLY, uh, and home builders, ITB on the weak side. Gold, silver, gold and silver stocks, XLP, UV, and RE. These are the defensive sectors. That staples utilities, healthcare, and real estate. Biotech also, solar week. And VXUS, that's developed uh, foreign uh, markets. And EEM is emerging markets. Uh, In-house, we trimmed some NVIDIA, did offensive trimming. Uh, I'll show that ticker right away. It got uh, over four ATR extended from... It's 21 day exponential moving average. We were gonna to have to size it for earnings next week. We did it today. 
uh, with it being extended, took advantage of that, booked some nice gains on that. We added to SSO as on that pullback to 4160, it held that 4155 breakout area. So we added to SSO uh, and we sold TMF. That's the TLT uh, uh, 30 year uh, leveraged ETF. We got rid of that. Um, Here's the portfolio. We're going to go through some nice looking charts that are in there and what outperformed today, as well as some other ones that we don't own that really showed some extreme strength. Bottom line for today, XL, CKNY dominate as the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 extended their breakouts. And I can smell the bear fur uh, singed as uh, I take a look at what happened today in the market. The bears just can't believe that this is happening, but that's why we don't go by the headlines. We go by price and volume action. So let's, uh, there's NVIDIA, we talked about that. Let's talk about some other stocks that we own that outperformed today. CMG, uh, very nice. One move below the ADMA uh, and then uh, break back above it to uh, new highs, new post breakout highs. This is our largest position, uh, treating us very well. Uh, Uber needed to hold where it held yesterday right at the eight it did and had a very strong day today uh new high highs post uh earnings gap up uh amd continues to be strong this is one of our smaller positions but it's just absolutely cranking uh this ai and chips is uh dominating look at the relative strength look at the volume uh let's see what else elf we own 3%, that's so-so. Uh, We're just, I think, barely, still barely negative on that. Celsius, we are waiting for this to do something, 3% position on this. Tried to move out early, couldn't follow up on it. Uh, Microsoft continues to rock and roll. Also, 2% size in this, continuing to make higher highs. Lulu, we trimmed that yesterday. Some buyers came into it today, but the volume really wasn't there. Uh, we may add back to this if we can see some volume as it got back above the 21 EMA. So those are our uh, in-house positions. Here's some that were really strong that we're not in, uh, but this certainly adds to uh, the feeling that uh, the market is getting stronger. Here you've got uh, Netflix. They announced that their paid tier uh, reached a milestone and the market reacted very positively to it up on over 200% volume, up 9% on the day. Just a beautiful breakout for Netflix. Take two, ETWO, this is uh, a software gaming stock with a strong breakout with volume. Um, they've got like the the, the biggest uh, release, gaming release. I'm not a big gamer. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even a little gamer. Uh, but I do uh, know that they own some very good titles and they really had a great earnings uh, report and they're looking ahead to their a new release of some of their most popular names. Dynatrace got an upgrade after its gap up on earnings yesterday and did higher volume than the earnings day. That's big. Uh, it certainly gets us into the top five names that we'll be looking at. Relative strength confirming the new high. Uh, look at all the blue days, all the updates on this even before its earnings. Something good going on with Dynatrace there, even though, I mean, the, the earnings numbers aren't great. The sales numbers are better. Uh, but they had a great quarter and then a great reaction to the upgrade. Micron, Japan investing uh, in Micron to make next generation memory chips, reacted positively up 4% on the day. Nice job there, Micron. Palantir, uh, great follow-up, massive follow-up uh, on its earnings report. Uh, just great stuff here again. Uh, adding to uh, the bullish overall outlook and market leadership. And then finally, we'll close with Rambus, RMBS. Uh, big breakout today, uh, or uh, the breakout was earlier, but the volume increased today up 9.6%. Look at the socks here, semiconductors lagged for a while after being the big leaders for the first uh, three and a half months of the year. Uh, two and a half months for the year, took a month and a half break, then went sideways. Four big, uh, four, three big updates out of the last four this week, up massively on the week. Sox is up 8.4% on the day, and it still has more room to run if you look at where it is uh, just forming this cup, going back to where it was uh, at the end of March, just six 
short weeks ago. Heck of a move this week for semiconductors. And uh, with that, we're going to wrap it. But first, we're going to remind you why we do what we do here at Revere. Uh, we're active managers. We protect the downside, then get back involved in the market as it gets to a healthier posture. When we start seeing progress on uh, our investments and on the leadership stocks, we plunge more money into the market. Uh, but protecting the downside is our number one concern. The market returns will take care of themselves when it, the market returns to a healthier posture. But especially if you're approaching retirement, you do not want to get hit with a massive, uh, take a massive hit to your portfolio. Um, and uh, that's why we do what we do here at Revere. And if you're interested in this approach, give us a shout. You can email me, DonnaReveresset.com, or the phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 59. 32 reminder it's not how much you make in the markets it's how much you can keep uh we protected did a good job of protecting assets last year have lagged this year uh, as the markets have come off the bottom but leading stocks certainly starting to act better over the last couple of weeks that's our bread and butter and when you get in a nice bull market for growth leaders uh, you can compound some very nice gains and with that i'm going to wrap it up for thursday May 18th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.